Hey guys, Steve Primo with Savant Playback here. I wanted to give you guys a quick walkthrough of our new system, the Breon. This is a 20 output playback system that is redundant and has live vocal processing handled by a universal audio Apollo. So we have a two iConnectivity Play Audio 12 set up here. They would be running an aggregate device in your DAW. We have the top one labeled A, the bottom one labeled B, and then we have USB 1 and 2 on each one of those, and those run to the rear panel. They're cable managed on one of our brackets right here that allows us to stack two of them on top of each other, one on top of each other, using the side chassis mounting holes and the lower quarter 20 bolt that goes up through the Play Audio 12. So moving on to the vocal processing, we have our Universal Audio Apollo here. Our UA Apollo has a small uh, temperature strip on the front of it. Uh, these tend to get a little bit warmer than, say, a Play Audio 12 or another interface because they do have DSP. So we like to put a temperature strip on those. We have a temperature strip on our power supply here as well, which you can see uh, right here. And we also have a UAD riser kit that uh, we really, really like to use on these. And the UAD riser kit right here is a small aluminum riser kit that is laser cut 3.25 millimeters thick. And it allows you to raise up the interface above uh, the chassis here. And that way you have a little bit of airflow. So it basically replaces the rubber feet and allows you to be able to still have a little bit of cooling uh, and airflow moving into there. Uh, the lid on these racks is removable. So we have small thumb screws like this right here. And I've pulled those out so that I could show you guys the insides in a couple of minutes. So now that we've covered this front side, I'm going to flip this around. We're going to talk about the rear, and then I'm going to show you guys the inside of the rack. Okay, great. Now that we've got this rack flipped around and we can take a look at the back side here, I'll go over some of the connectors that we've got. On the top left-hand corner, we've got our AC input. Our Savant DC PSU is capable of doing anywhere from 85 to 264 volts. We label our panels 100 to 240 volts. Whatever AC input you have going in is going to pass through to the through connector here. If you run your AC input at 120, the through is going to see 120. If you run it at 240, the through is going to see 240. Moving on to the UAD inputs, we have UAD input 1, which is wired to line input. We have a through here. This is simply a parallel through jumper that's going to allow you to have a safety channel right there that you can either run to a console input or to your monitor desk or a recording, whatever you'd like to do. This is just simply a, a parallel through right here. The same thing on UAD input two, and then you have your through here. So you have line in, through, line in, and through. Uh, as mentioned, we've got our AC through on the bottom here, and then we have UAD out one, two, three, and four across the bottom there. This one, two, three, and four are direct line outputs from the UAD. And we've also taken advantage of splitting that signal so that we have what's called a MALT. And one, two, three, and four not only are fed from the UAD to this rear panel here on this XLR connectors, but they also go to the multi-pin output. So on the multi-pin we have one through 20 are the Play Audio 12 outputs, 21, two, three, and four are the UAD but then we also have those coming out right here as well. That is in case you damage your fan out or you lose your fan out, you're still gonna be able to have uh, your vocal processing. So next up, I'm gonna show you guys the multi-pin and I'll go over some of the ways that we've wired that up, some of the other specifics. Okay, sweet. So now we're looking at the center of the rack. This multi-pin is an inset multi-pin we have designed this so that it can be totally flush and be able to take advantage of 45 degree angles here so that the multi-pin will be inset and allow us to be able to do this. 
Um, in order to do that, we've had to come up with some bracing and some other things like that, but it is extremely solid and has turned out to be uh, quite a, uh, an impeccable design for us. So that being said, wiring, uh, you've got 1 through 20 coming from the Play Audio 12s, 1 through 10 being the top Play Audio 12, 11 through 20 being the bottom Play Audio 12, and then you have outputs 1, 2, 3, and 4 from the UAD, and those are going to be coming out 21, 2, 3, and 4 on this output snake. Then they're also coming out 1, 2, 3, and 4 over here, like I said. So that's where you get the advantage of an additional safety feature is if you lose your fan out, if you bend a pin or something like that, then this guy right here um, isn't entirely necessary for you to have your vocal processing. So uh, 1 through 20 on this is wired to the two Play Audio 12s. 21, 2, 3, and 4 are wired to the UAD. The fan out for this has 28 outputs. And we've designed that to where we're taking all of the outputs, wired them up. And that way, if you ever decide that you want to upgrade to a UADX4 or have more outputs on this system, then your fan out is already wired. You have a clear path to upgrade there. All right, sweet. So now we can go over some of the PA12 connectivity that we've got and some of the features on the right side of the rack. So we have PA12A and A. Uh, USB and then a B and a B, which is primary, primary, backup, backup. We have our two RTP ports here. So we've got our RTP that is connected to the top Play Audio 12 and our RTP 2, which is connected to the bottom Play Audio 12. That would allow you to connect to one of these and be able to send four network sessions of RTP MIDI to a Mio XM or something else on stage. We've done the same thing as we've uh, previously mentioned on the UAD, and we've taken four output channels from the Play Audio 12, and we've not only sent them to the multi-pin output, but we've created a mult, and they are hitting this rear panel here. So one, two, three, and four on the rear panel here is going to be connected to not only the multi-pin output, but the top Play Audio 12, that would allow you to be able to still have a show. If you lose your fan out, you'll only have four XLR outs, but that would at least allow you to be able to do stereo left, right, maybe a sample channel or a BGV, and then time code or click or something like that in the event that all else fails and your multi-pen is rendered useless. Um, we did think one more step that we could do uh, and with using this mult would be to add a little bit of length to those and that way in case you also had an interface failure and your top play audio 12 failed um, and you lost your multi-pen connector then you would be able to take these four connectors unplug them plug them into the bottom or top play audio 12 and they have enough length that they can reach either one of the interfaces and that way in the crazy chance that not only you have one of your interfaces fail, but you also lose your multi-pen or have, uh, you know, a damaged multi-pen that will not work, then you will still be able to have a four-channel redundant playback system, and you would also still be able to take advantage of the mults on the UAD. So there would have to be quite a few things that would fail in order to make this system uh, rendered useless. It'd have to be a really, really bad day. So I'm going to show you guys some of the top stuff, and I think that's pretty much it. Brion, brand new system for 2023. Really excited about it. And yeah, thank you guys very much for checking it out. See you soon. Okay, cool. So now that we've got the lid off, you can take a look and you can see some of the things that we've got here. You can see some of our cable management here for the four USB cables that are running up. As I said, we've got interface A and B, and then you've got USB 1 and 2. Those are all labeled up here, so they correspond with the rear panel as well. Something that's really, really cool about this is this rear panel is actually entirely removable, um, and then all you're left with is just the 
interfaces and your DC power. You can simply unplug your two RTP ports, your four USB, your TRS, and then the rear panel will actually uh, entirely come off. So super easy to service, which is great. Um, typically in a system that has got this much packed into it, they're extremely hard to service, but we've taken a lot of time to add the functionality to be able to make sure that you can get your hands in there. Uh, something that's a little bit harder to see from right here, um, we do a locking DC modification to the iConnectivity interfaces. So we do have locking DC, um, and then all of our DC cables are made in-house as well. So we have locking DC on the top and bottom play audio 12. I'll scoot over a little bit here and I'll zoom in up the multi-pen so that you can see it a little bit better and see how some of the cabling is around it. Okay, great. So now that we've got this scooted over and you can see the multi-pen, I can show you some of its routing. So the play audio 12, 1 through 10 is going to be this top loom. 11 through 20 is going to be the bottom loom. You've actually got a significant amount of room here to be able to reach through and be able to tech things if needed, and that was really important to us. Um, down in here, you've got your UAD wired line in. Uh, our built-in strain relief on the Zero-G rack allows you to be able to keep DC on the bottom. So the way that we do this, or the reason that we do this this way is because power is most likely uh, going to be one of the least of your worries that you're going to have to deal with. So it's wired up on the bottom. Then audio would be something next that you may have to tech. And then your USBs, typically with USB audio, and that's a pretty common thing. So it's kind of built from the ground up in ways that are going to be easiest to tech it. It wouldn't make very much sense if the USBs were all buried and stuff because they're going to be the one thing you're probably going to have to tech more or at least look at more. Um, so it's kind of built uh, like a layered cake. So... Uh, yeah, so this is pretty much the inside of it. Pretty clean, pretty simple, not too crazy. Um, we've got our parallel throughs here for the UAD, and then all of the UAD uh, in and out is on this hand, or this right-hand side. Um, so yeah, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'll walk you guys through the AC a little bit, and then we'll be good to go. Okay, sweet. So now we can take a look at some of our AC and our DC. So we've got our AC input right here. This AC input is going to power our Savant DC power supply. Well, this power supply has multiple DC voltage outputs, and you can see that the 9-volt one is at the top. It's hard to see the label from this angle, but we do have clear uh, and black labels on here that show the voltage. So we're using right, uh, right angle flag connectors, we have a temperature strip. Your AC is going to come in. It's going to hit your DC power supply here, which is going to send 9 volts to your play on your 12 interfaces. It's going to send 12 volt DC to your Apollo Twin. And then we've also split the AC, as we talked about earlier, where it's going to come down and go through. And that's going to hit the bottom uh, AC through. I'm going to be able to allow you to power your laptops and other things like that. Just a small little strain relief on here to kind of keep this cable uh, tucked away. And that's pretty much it. Uh, got our Thunderbolt 3 here. Got a small just strain relief attached with a little piece of shrink right here to uh, the UAD. And then on our lid, we have a grommet that this will come through. And that way, uh, it doesn't get messed up at all. So I'm going to button this system up real quick. And then I'll show you guys the fan out also. So here we've got uh, two of the fan outs for the Brion system. So you can see the fan outs roughly about the size of a hand. Pretty large size, but it's got a nice big fat rubber connector. Uh, nice locking ring. This is a Syntax. It's an SVK85 connector. Uh, so we're using 28 pair. Uh, we have 1 through 10 right here. Terminated to male uh, XLR. They have a small piece of shrink right here to help keep those sorted. And you have individual pieces of number shrink on each one of the channels right here. So we've got one through ten is black. Uh, we have white, which is going to be eleven through twenty. So this would be PA twelve. 
one PA-12-2, and then the last eight channels uh, are dedicated to uh, your UAD. The cool thing about this is this is just a standard pinout, fan out. So if you have any other uh, SVK gear, if you end up getting one of our monitor racks or something like that, then all of this stuff will be able to be used for other systems because it's just a straight normal fan out, nothing fancy, just female uh, inline connector to male XLR. So this is an investment that you can use with other systems as you grow in your system scales. So the top of these racks, just I have a thumb screw, a little M3 thumb screw with a nylon washer. And you have four of those, every so toolless uh, lid removal and stick that guy back on. And then just like that, our system is back operational, ready to go. I want to thank you guys for stopping by, checking this out. Thank you everyone that supports Savant Playback. We look forward to a lot more years of doing some fun stuff with you. See you around.